Okay, hello. Um, in this video, we're going to show you how to perform a subcutaneous injection, also known as a sub-Q. And um, <clears throat> to get started, you're going to need to do kind of a lot of the same things that we did for the endodermal. Um, you want to make sure that you've washed your hands before the procedure, and that you've set your table up. For the sub-Q, you're obviously going to need um, some sodium chloride. We're going to use a 27 gauge one inch needle, or a half inch needle I should say. You're going to need a couple of cotton balls and of course um, a spot band-aid. Okay, so make sure all your supplies are assembled, make sure you've washed your hands, and that you've put on your gloves. Okay? The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, uh, begin the procedure by asking your patient to state their name and to find out if they have any allergies just like we did for the for the um, intradermal. Okay? So hi, my name is Carlos, I'm your medical assistant, and I'm going to be performing an injection on you today. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And can you state your first and last name for me, please? My name is Jane Doe. Okay, Jane Doe, can you state your first, uh, can you state your date of birth, excuse me? 8, 12, Okay, very good. It's important that you know that you have the right patient, that, that, that the information they give you about their identification matches the, uh, the orders that you have from your doctor. Okay, so once you know that you have the right patient and um, uh, you want to make sure that you determine if whether or not your patient is allergic to anything you're going to be using. Mm -hmm. So, um, Jane, are you allergic to sodium chloride? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, how about adhesive on tape? Mm -hmm. Okay. What about metal that we're going to be using for the injection, the needle? And how about cotton? No allergies? Okay. And, uh, and so this injection is going to be given on the upper part of your arm, either left or right side. Do you have a preference on which side? On my right. Your right side? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up, and I'll be right back. Okay. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to um, uh, go ahead and prep our supplies. We're going to take the back end and the back side of the uh, syringe wrapper off and throw that away in the trash. And, uh, and then again, you're going to prep your syringe. Remember, you're going to just loosen the plunger first, just loosen it up, pull it down once, push it all the way back up, make, make sure it's all the way back up. Then um, you're going to grab the hub, which is this middle section, grab the hub firmly, grab the uh, barrel with your other fingers, and as you're holding these back, you're actually going to take your other hand and push the cap up so that it's loose, and we just want to loosen it up. We don't want to take it off. We just want to loosen it up. And now you know your syringe is prepped. Okay, so we're going to set that back down into its little sterile cradle there. And we're going to um, now um, I make sure that we have the right medication. This is our first label check. Okay, so we're going to read everything on the label, make sure that we have the right medication, make sure that, the, that it's not expired, and read any instructions that it gives us regarding the medication. Okay, so it looks like we have um, the right medication. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to begin um, uh, drawing up our medication. So what I like to do first, or what you need to do first, I should say, is you're going to go ahead and prep the top of your, your vial. So you're going to place some alcohol on a cotton, and you're going to just push it and twist it back and forth. It's important that you do that firmly because while this was sitting in the cabinet, um, debris, like um, uh, dust, dust particles, even from when we talk, uh, droplets can land on that, and we don't want that to be contaminated as we put the needle into withdrawal withdraw medication. All right, so we're going to set that down. We're going to put that in the trash. And we're going to close our alcohol bottle. Okay, and at this point, before we draw it up, we're going to do our second label check. Okay, make sure we have the right medication. Make sure it's not expired. And again, read any instructions that the that are um, uh, recommended by the manufacturer. Okay, so I know I still have the right medication. Okay, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and take the syringe with one hand. We're not grabbing it with two hands. One hand, and we're just going to slide the cap off. It's important to me that you use good needle safety because um, uh, I don't want anybody to get stuck with a dirty needle or a clean needle for that matter. Okay, at this point we're going to draw up to 0 0.05. So we're going to draw it up to 0 0.05. That's five little lines past the very first big line. Okay, and then we're going to take and turn it upside down with one hand. We're going to place it in the rubber stopper. Okay, and then we're going to um, flip it around, holding it with uh, two fingers at the neck and two fingers down at the barrel of the syringe. We're going to, if you can just watch real closely, we're going to inject those bubbles, that air, up into the vial. So those little bubbles go in. And now we're, we're going to begin withdrawing the medication. We want to withdraw a lot of medication even though um, we don't need this much. We want to withdraw a lot. And what that does is it allows us to tap those air bubbles to the top. Try not to bend this because it'll bend your needle. Okay. So pop all those bubbles up to the top. Those little tiny bubbles that seem to be stubborn are not going to be problematic 
Um, so you don't have to worry about the little bubbles so much as you do the big bubbles, okay? Now we're going to return the plunger back to the 0 0.05. That's the desired amount. That's the amount the doctor's ordering. And we're, we're ready now to pull the needle out. So go ahead and set the vial down on the table. And holding the vial with one hand, holding the, the syringe barrel with the other hand, you're going to pull it out and separate, okay? And then we're going to simply place the needle back into that cap, making sure the needle doesn't touch anything other than the inside of that cap. We don't want to contaminate that needle that's going to go into the patient's arm. If it becomes contaminated, we should stop the procedure and withdraw it again, okay? At this point, we want, we want to do our third check. We want to make sure that the label still indicates the right medication. Uh, again, I can't tell you how easy it is to pull the wrong medication off the off of the shelf. So make sure you have the right medication, that it's not expired, and read all those all that important information about the medication. Okay, so ma'am, what I need you to do is pull your arm out of your sleeve, and then I'm going to have you just stand right here so that I can begin, uh, so I can give you the, the injection. Okay, so. What we're going to do is we're going to locate the middle third this time of the upper arm, the middle third. We're, we're going to locate the middle third starting from the shoulder all the way down to the elbow. Okay? These are the two points I want you to focus on. Placing one finger, placing one finger on the shoulder, one finger on the elbow. We're going to isolate the middle third, which is going to be between these two points. Okay? We're not going to be giving the medication up here or down there. It's going to be between these two points. Okay? So now that I know I'm going to be giving the medication here, I need to establish the back half of the arm. So what I want the patient to do is to bend the arm like this flat, and I want you to notice that the arm flattens out on the side, like this, okay? So we're gonna actually split the arm in half, front half from back half, we're gonna split it in half, and in that middle third, we're gonna be sticking right back there, okay? So that's our target um, area. So now that I know where I'm gonna be giving the injection, I'm gonna clean it using small to larger circles. I like to have everything ready, get your, get your um, spot band-aid ready. And again, with one hand, you're going to grab your syringe, and you're going to tilt the lid off. And this time, what I want you to do is, I want you to hold this syringe with four fingers behind, one thumb on the top, and you'll see that this time my fingers are lying flat. They're not sitting up like the intradermal, or standing up like the intradermal. They're actually going to be lying flat like this, okay? We need to switch. Okay. So now in that middle third, on the back half of that imaginary line, I'm going to tent the skin up. Relax your arm. I'm going to tent the skin up like this. Just tent it up. And I'm going to come in at a 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go right into the patient's arm at an upward degree angle. Okay, ma'am, you're going to fill a stick in one, two, and three. Okay. Once you're in, you're going to anchor down to the arm. If you can get a shot from this side. Anchored down to the arm. Notice how my fingers are anchored to her arm, and I'm holding very steady. I want you to withdraw the, the um, pull the plunger back, just to make sure you're not in a, in a vein, and then you're going to inject the medication, okay? Uh, notice how I'm holding my, uh, my hand very uh, carefully, very still. Okay, now I'm going to pull the needle out by going backwards, going down. Don't come towards you. Go straight down to the ground and pull the needle out. Separate your hands immediately and get rid of your needle, okay? And you're basically going to take the needle and just toss it into the mouth of that sharps and then lift it up underneath. Now I dropped my cotton ball, so I'm going to grab another one and I'm going to place it over the puncture site. Sometimes you massage the medication, sometimes you don't, so you kind of have to follow the manufacturer's recommendation, okay? So now that that's in, I'm going to take my cotton ball and I'm going to place it over the puncture site. And now it's time for me to give my patient uh, post instructions. And, uh, and so my instructions to the patients are, uh, ma'am, uh, we don't expect you to have a reaction to this medication, but if you do, um, give us a call. If we're closed, then you probably want to go to the nearest emergency room. Okay? Okay. If, the re if the reaction is serious, you may even have to call 911. Okay. But again, we don't expect you to have a reaction, uh, but I just want you to know what to do if you do. Now, some react adverse reactions or side effects could be shortness of breath, it could be um, feeling dizzy, um, redness or swelling, maybe even fever. So uh, again, if it happens during business hours, give us a call, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.